the magic obelisk. For those of you out there who don't know what an obelisk is, this is the definition straight from the Merriam-Webster's dictionary. An upright, four-sided, usually monolithic pillar that gradually tapers as it rises and terminates in a pyramid. I tried to find out the reason for it, but honestly, the more I looked it up, the less I cared. The game is about Lucas, a tree spirit who can only travel out into the world by staying in the shade. If he ventures out into the sunlight for even one second, he'll lose some energy and will be zapped back to the last checkpoint. If this happens five times in a level, your character will instantly turn into a tree and it's game over. To help you out, you have a spirit friend named Popo. He can use the obelisks that are lying around to create shadows for you to travel on. There is, of course, one huge problem with the whole setup of the entire game, and that is one that the Littlest Wii viewer actually noticed before me. He turned to me while I was playing the game, and he looked at me confused, and he said, Why doesn't he just go out at night? I just laughed and said, You know what? You're right. That would make sense. Basically, the game is a lot like Lit, except in reverse. Instead of needing to stay in the light, you'll need to stay in the shadows. And just like my lit review, I'm only going to purposely show you the first 10 levels of the game. Because that's almost one third of the game, and I hate spoiling puzzle games. The goal of each of the chapters is to get to the portal that is somewhere in the world. Sometimes you can see it right away, and sometimes it's hidden until you do something to make it seen. The graphics were very nice and colorful. They seemed to fit perfectly with the storybook feel they were trying to portray. You play the game by using your Wiimote in a horizontal game position, like an NES controller. You control Popo as she rotates the shadows around to make a pathway for Lucas. Now to do this it can get a bit tricky, as you need to move Popo around these big obelisks, and it doesn't feel natural to do it. I was constantly going in the wrong direction, or accidentally leaving the area. However, it is something that you will eventually get used to. Some of the obelisk shadows will have more than just darkness. Some will produce heat, ice, or even wind. You'll use these special shadows to solve the puzzles of each of the chapters. However, sometimes you'll need the help of the characters that are around the chapter world. For example, in this world, you need to get the giraffe some water so he can help you by moving his shadow around the world so you can get to the end portal. Once you do this though, it gets a little screwed up. After you finish his quest, he wishes for you to be his friend. And when you become a tree, he wants you to be near him. Isn't that sweet? Or at least you would think it would be. But you know what? I've been to a zoo before, giraffe. And I know what they eat. Leaves from trees. The giraffe wants to eat me. Oh, I'm sure you want me to be near you. So you can eat me, you long-necked freak. One of the biggest frustrations with this title is the camera, as you'll often have a hard time seeing where you need to go. It was something I struggled with the whole time, and unfortunately, it never gets any better. There are 34 levels to play, and with the exception of being able to come back and replay a level again for fun, there is no real reason to replay any chapter. I do have to say the game gets very hard, so even though the gameplay looks like a young kid could enjoy it, they might become really frustrated really fast due to its difficulty level. The Magic Obelisk is a fun little game. However, the feature that I found most appealing about the title is the price. It's only 500 Wii points. That is an insane bargain for the gameplay you get. Normally titles like this go for at least 1,000 Wii points. So at that great price, how can I possibly say it's not worth a buy? Even with its camera issues and somewhat frustrating controls, its price point makes up for all of that. So I think it's completely worth a buy.